flagship season finished on Sunday. It was one of the most thrilling seasons that most of us can remember. It wasn't just who would win the Premier League, whether it would be Manchester City or Liverpool, also who would get the last place in the Champions League, Tottenham Hotspur or Arsenal, uh, bitter North London rivals, and of course, who would stay in the uh, Premier League and who would go down. Leeds looked threatened for a long time, as did Everton. In the end, they both survived. We're joined now by Liam Brady to look back on the season. Liam, Sunday I found really thrilling. Uh, As a Liverpool fan, I was kind of hopeful for a while. And I didn't think City were doing their stuff until Pep made a couple of substitutions. Gundogan came on and he scored uh, two goals and Raheem Sterling set the first goal up. So were you caught up in it? Well, I was at the Arsenal match, I mean, I was oh, at right. Everton, and as you know, all the games have kicked off at the same time. Yeah. Now, at, at about, uh, with about 25 minutes to go in the Arsenal match, Arsenal were winning quite comfortably, and, uh, uh, and Tottenham were winning, uh, easily at Norwich. So yes. that kind of ended the excitement at the Emirates. So I jumped out of my seat and went into the, one of the lounges there where they had, both games on, Man yeah. City and Liverpool, and I was sat in between two TV screens right. watching the, the drama unfold, and uh, it was it was great stuff, wasn't it? You know, yeah. it was a good decision by me to go and watch. <laughs> and um, uh, at one time, you know, uh, when uh, when Coutinho scored that second goal, and yeah. you saw the reaction of one Guardiola, he he looked stu- stunned and shocked, and there was a. It cut to Phil Foden. He had his head in his hands, and the, yeah. the, the stadium was silent. You know, uh, apart from uh, the Villa supporters who were cheering, uh, and you, it, you looked and you knew what was happening at Anfield. That was one-one, and yes. Liverpool were attacking the cop end. So yeah. you're thinking uh, Liverpool are going to win the league here, but it all changed in five minutes, didn't it? It all yeah. changed in five minutes with City's comeback, and as you said, their substitutions really hit the mark. Um, Sinchenko as well, the, the yes. left back, he played well when he came on too, Eamon, you know, yeah. so Guardiola got it absolutely right. I thought De Bruyne was very good when when they went two behind, he, he lifted the team, Yeah, undoubtedly lifted the team, um, and they got great goals, you know, the, the cross from Sterling to the far post, Gundogan arrives there, um, you know, Rodri side foot into the corner, yes. that was a beautiful goal, and... Um, and 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 then the, the the winning goal scored by Gundogan again with a great cross from Kevin De Bruyne. It, it was it was a fabulous stuff, and I, I think in the end they they probably just about deserved it. I know your heart is with Liverpool, Eamon, but yeah. they just about deserve it. I think whoever comes out on top is is deservedly the the the, the champion. You know. Yeah, as they say, Liam, the league table doesn't lie after thirty eight games, and it's interesting no, the, that the the, the City finished 19 points ahead of Chelsea in third place. Liverpool 18 points ahead of Chelsea and Spurs were next on 71. So it's 20, 22 points uh, behind Manchester City. These two teams, Liam, you've played in great sides. And of course, you played in the Premier League at a time when, you know, Ferguson and uh, Manchester United and Liverpool had really great sides. There, there, there tends to be an awful lot of hype about teams. People are saying this is the best Premier League ever, which I'm inclined to agree with. It. But how good are these two teams, Liam, uh, Manchester City and Liverpool, historically, if we, we judge them against the past benchmarks? Oh, they're up there, Eamon, with the very best of teams that we've ever seen. There's no doubt about that. But they, they've got a choice of worldwide players now, haven't they? Yes. You know, the players come from all over the world, whereas the great Liverpool teams, and I can go back to the late 60s when Man City had a had a great team yes. with Franny Kitty and Mike Summerby and Colin Bell. You remember that team, I don't do, you? I do, indeed, yeah. Malcolm Allison yeah. was the coach, Joe Mercer was the manager, yep. Yeah, yeah, they had a great team then, and then, you know, Liverpool have had great teams for the last 30-odd years. They had a... They had a a uh, poor, poor time of it when they couldn't win the league until they got Klopp back as manager. But yes. uh, 
Uh, yeah, they're definitely up there, and it shows, you know, though in the European competition as well how good they are. Liverpool are in the final. They've been in several finals in the last few years. Yep. City haven't quite made that breakthrough, but they were so unlucky not to beat Real Madrid and go through to the final and face yep. Liverpool again, to be quite honest. Yes. Uh, so I think I think you judge them from what you see week in, week out in the Premiership, and it's really, really impressive. But they're doing it in Europe as well, Eamon, so that, that tells you that they are two exceptional teams. Yeah, and John made the point, and it's a well-made point, that in your day, for example, you went to Italy, went to Juventus, and at that time, and until, I'd say, relatively recently, Spain and Italy was where the money was, the big, big money. There seemed to be no limit on what they could spend. Now, if you look at Inter or Juve, they're taking sort of players like Aaron Ramsey, you know, they're taking cast-offs, if you might say Ashley Young went and played there. They're taking cast-offs from the Premier League. And the point, the net point John was making is that's where the money is because of the television money and the popularity of English football around the world. And the great players and indeed the great coaches will follow the money. Yeah, that's always been the way, Eamon. I think Spain, Real Madrid and Barcelona led the way for, for many years, probably in the early 60s and then... Once uh, Italy opened up to foreign players again in 1980 when when I went and yeah. it, it really took off after the 82 World Cup when, um, you know, all the top players that played in that 82 World Cup seemed to gravitate towards towards Italy. So And, and then it was the most powerful league uh, in, in the world because the money was there, you know, the likes yeah. of Platini, Maradona. And then you had those great Dutch players, Roy Card, Van Basten, and yeah. and uh, 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 Hullet. And yeah. then you know at at, at Inter Milan they had Matthias and Klinsmann. And you know for twenty years it was it was probably the strongest league game. And then that's AC Milan will win European yeah. Cups, Juventus. Uh, but Spain always had Real Madrid and Barcelona as their you know flying the flag for them, and they were wealthy clubs because yes. of uh, the, the the wealth of the owners. But now it's it's the money that the Premier League generates makes yes. makes it much more attractive to all the players worldwide to come there, you know, and it's it is the most powerful league in the world. Um, uh, City have now signed probably one of the best young strikers that there is around in the world in Haaland. Uh, uh, Mbappe has decided to stay with PSG. Looks like now, and Real Madrid, Real Madrid are kicking up about it. But um, they, they uh, the, the Premier League is the most powerful league, I and mean, that's where the money is, and that's probably why it is the best league. I, I don't know. It seems to be less disparity between the top and bottom in in England. And you get more surprises. You can get, yes. you know, a team like Crystal Palace beating Man City, or um, yeah, you know, uh, all these kind of surprising results can pop up now and again in uh, in the Premier League. Whereas in the in the other leagues, it doesn't seem to be the case. I think Bayern Munich have won the league for well, probably the By twelve years. So the, the last ten years, and they won it this year by thirteen points. And the other uh, factor there. Liam, is the competitiveness of it. I mean, Wolves didn't go to Anfield and lie down. They took the lead after three minutes. And, of course, Aston Villa didn't go to the Etihad and lie down. They're 2-0 up with 20 minutes to go. So that sort of uh, confirms the point you're making. Just one final point before I move on. When you went to Italy, before you went to Italy, the Italians were concerned about nurturing their own players and developing their own players and there was a rule which only allowed clubs to have one foreign player. It was like that to protect, as they put it, the Italian game. Was there something in that? And is the reverse likely to happen now and has been happening, in fact, in the Premier League, in that it's very hard, and you notice you were head of youth development at, at Arsenal, it's very hard for young English or Irish kids to make the breakthrough in the Premier League because they tend to reach for the checkbook. Well, that's true, yeah. They're, they are up against that. But then, on the other hand, you look at the England team at the moment, Eamon, I yeah. don't think it's been 
stronger for you know for That's twenty right. years. Yeah, yeah. They got to they got to the Euro final. The Pops should have won it. I think if Gareth Southgate had been a bit more adventurous, they might have beaten Italy in the yes. final. They got to the semi final of the World Cup last time round. And you see all these young players emerging, like Phil Fold and yes. Saka, Arsenal. Uh, you know, the, there's, there's lots of young players yeah, evolving. Declan and, Rice, of course, is yeah, a huge Declan player. Rice is probably one of the 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 the, the players that the top teams would love to have in, in in the side. He's probably the best defensive midfield player that there is around at the moment. So. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't. I don't think that argument stands up, and it didn't stand up in Italy as well because when the foreign players have come in, like Italy, still won World Cups when all those foreign players, when lots more foreign players were in the league. You right. know, yeah. I, mean, I got back to 2006, didn't they? Yeah. The, the Italians won it in Germany. Well, the league was full of foreign players, so right. I don't think that backs up. No, I remember that tournament, Liam. We were working together. The one man I remember. Is Cannavaro, who was central defender. He was the Italian captain, if I'm not mistaken. And You're he, right. I mean. He was quite magnificent. <laughs> I thought a central defender would never be player in the tournament. And in fact, I think it was Zidane who won it, uh, despite getting sent off. But the point I'm trying to make, I suppose, is that Cannavaro and great defensive play was a big, big deal. And it's, and, and that's right and proper, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. There's different ways to win things. The Italians have always done it with very, very sound defence uh, and, you know, hidden towns and hidden teams on the counter-attack. We've seen Conte this year at Spurs. He's introduced that kind yes. of me method of play at Tottenham, hasn't he? You know, so uh, that's that's the, the, they're, they're born to have a defensive mind, the Italians, I mean, you know. They know how to win. Um, but their league is struggling, you know, or yes. you can't when, when we look at the Champions League next season, do you think there might be an Italian winner? Everybody, I think, 99.9%. No. .9 no, oh, no. And, and that's rather sad, isn't it? Um, it's one of the great footballing nations, not just for the players it produced, but for the great thinkers about the game, Trapattoni, Ancelotti, people like that. Italy is a huge part of what's most wonderful, really, about the football culture. Oh, well, that's right, you know, but they can't even keep their best coaches out. I mean, Conte's no. at Sport, Ancelotti's at Real Madrid, you know. Yeah. yeah. So it is, it's, it's a league that's gone backwards in, in, in the years, in let's say the last 10 years. Yeah. Now, let me ask you about Arsenal, Liam. They finished fifth in the end. They won their match against Everton, I think, 5-1. Uh, if Spurs had lost at Norwich, Arsenal would have claimed the Champions League place, but... Spurs were never going to lose at Norwich. They just needed a point and they got it. Arsenal have shown a glimmers or glimpses, if you like, of promise. And they have got some very good young players. You mentioned one there, Saka. They've also got Smith Rowe. And there's a young fella called Martinelli. I think he's Brazilian, Liam. And this lad uh, that you brought to the club, uh, Enketia, who scored a lot of goals in the latter part of the season. He's still got a lot of work to do, though, to get a really strong team, doesn't he? I think I think they're they're not quite strong enough mentally, Eamon. You know, yeah. they made bad mistakes at Tottenham um, in that match that they. Yeah. I think it was the uh, third game from the end. Um, they needed to be strong mentally in that game. They weren't in discipline. Let. Uh, let Arsenal down badly. He gave a bad penalty away. Then Holding got sent off yes. or Epo in song. Now, th those things cost cost uh, the, the the team dearly in the end. And you know those those youngsters probably weren't just ready enough for for that kind of pressurized situation. Yes. And and they didn't really have the leadership that's needed yeah. from the older players. You know yeah. so. I think it's a work in progress. I think Arteta has done a pretty good job. You look at, um, you know, how much money he has to spend compared to the other teams. Um, you look at uh, the start they had to the season when they lost the first three games. So I suppose fifth was was all right in the end. 
However, when you're done by your your biggest rivals for yeah. for fourth spot and the Champions League spot, yeah. that's what left a sour taste in the mouth. And the way they played against Spurs was very very disappointing. But yes. I was at I was at the Emirates at the weekend, and there's a there's a decent feeling about uh, what's going on. It's a young team. Um, I think players will leave. Probably Enketia will leave. Is his contract's up now, Eamon, and he can right. go for nothing and probably make himself a lot more money right. um, than he would at Arsenal. So there's there's lots of, I think Lacassette will leave, so probably need one, maybe two real good goal-scoring players, uh, yeah. maybe a very good midfield player, and um, but it's they're not easy to get, are they? They're not easy to get. So yeah. I, I think... With Manchester United falling out of the equation like they did so badly, yes, has made Arsenal look a bit better than they really are. Right. Now, Liam, let me ask you a question. The rose with John yesterday, and the rose also with Pep Guardiola last week. Pep, at a press conference last week, said that he believed winning the Premier League was a greater achievement than winning the Champions League. And when I was talking to John yesterday, John actually agreed with him and said, that's the acid test. It's over 38 games. It's a very, very strong league. So uh, John and Pep Guardiola believe that as an achievement, winning the English Premier League at the moment has more merit than winning the Champions League. And I was thinking about it and thinking about it, and I think they're right. Even though Liverpool and Real Madrid should be a great game on Saturday, and I'm really looking forward to it. What's your view, Liam? Yeah, I would agree with John. I would agree with with Pep Guardiola. Um, yeah. it, it is the asset test game, and you know when you look at the the Champions League, um, the group stages, you kind of can pick the two that's coming out of the group. Yeah. Uh, most most cases. Yep. Uh, then it's a cup competition. It's a knockout competition, which any anything can happen. Yep. But Liverpool this season, for instance, Liverpool this season, they got some easy teams in that in that knockout. Yes. Uh, phase, didn't they? They got. Yep. Uh, I, I, I think they got. Uh, let me let me think. Benfica was it? Eamon? they knocked yep. out. Yeah. Knockout. That was always going to be an easy a very team. poor Atletico Madrid team as well. Yeah. They had. Let, that you know, yeah. well, I think that was Man City that beat Atletico, wasn't it? But um, uh, I think Liverpool might have had them in the group stage. That's but, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's um, it, it's an easier it's an easier competition than the grind of the Premier League. You like, like what Manchester City have done because Liverpool really put the pressure on them, didn't they? You they know? did. Yeah. All the way. Brilliantly. They came back brilliantly. They were winning every game, and City had to bounce back. You know. Yeah. They they were two goals down at West Ham and they came back and then there were two yeah. goals down at Aston Villa and they came back and won that game. So yeah. uh, they've showed the courage, they've showed that resilience, they've showed that drive that Guardiola is on about that's needed for the Premier League. I don't think the Champions League is 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 uh, as demanding as the, as the Premier League. Put it that way, but it's yes. it's. It's the icing on the cake, and and Guardiola would love to win it, wouldn't he? Again? Oh, he would, yeah, of course. Well, I was looking at his record after they won last night, and you know, yeah, it's it's incessant, isn't it, Guardiola? Oh, whether yeah. it's Barcelona or Bayern Munich or or Man City, the amount I think it's nine or ten league titles in the past sixteen years, I mean, so it's crazy. At least, stuff. well, he, yeah, he goes to the richest club and the most uh, renowned club. In Germany, Bayern Munich. Who yeah, won. but you still got to buy well, I mean, You know, look yeah, at yeah. Manchester United. Now look at Manchester United and the money they've spent. And yeah, yeah. No, no. I I don't want to take anything away from Guardiola. Uh, it's just that he at Manchester City. The issue there is really Abu Dhabi owns it. So one of the things that was curious about the last few weeks, Liam, when they were really fighting for the league uh, and indeed for the Champions League. The absence of their hundred million pounds sterling Jack Grealish, uh, Grealish, <laughs> he didn't get, get on the pitch on on Sunday, Liam. In yesterday morning's papers, they stayed out and had a party until three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and the first face on the on the photograph was Jack Grealish, but they can afford to make a hundred million pound error, shall we say? And it doesn't really upset the ship. 
Well, I think he needs to get his act together, Jack Reedus. So I think he's been involved in one or two incidents this season, yep. but Guardiola wouldn't wouldn't be that pleased about. But uh, you know, you're entitled to celebrate when you win the league game and let your hair down. Absolutely, Absolutely. <laughs> it's he, not good me enough for me. He, he's got a question mark behind him, hasn't he? You know whether yeah. whether the money's been well spent. I have seen him in some games. And, you know, when he came on against Real Madrid, he looked very, very good. You know, he could have yep. scored twice. So he has made his contribution to winning the league. Yeah. But not a contribution, I think, that Guardiola would have uh, would have, uh, would have have wanted when he spent the $100 million. He was probably looking for a bit more. So yep. there's a question mark there. But he's going to have a centre forward uh, oh, yeah. next year to play with in Haaland. And maybe maybe that might, go, might make all the difference to Jack Grealish. It's hard to get in that City team, isn't it? With Foden and Mares, not easy. Well, Sterling, for example, Raheem Sterling, who's a starter for England, can't get in the starting eleven last Sunday. And uh, in Grealish's favour, he scored an important goal against West Ham when they were coming back from two 0 down. Now, Liam, yeah, good game that day as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the big question I have to ask you is: I asked John yesterday for his player of the year and his coach of the year and John went with Mo Salah which was a little surprising to me because I think since he come back from the African Cup of Nations he's looked a little low on energy but that's John's choice and uh, Antonio Conte John chose as coach of the year I went with Conte uh, as coach of the year and Andy Robertson, Liverpool's left back, who I just think is a magnificent professional and is a bit sort of out of the limelight because of Trent Alexander and how brilliant he is going forward. But Robertson, to me, is a complete player. He's a really good defender. He makes a big contribution to the team when they need to up the ante, up the tempo. It's him that's doing the driving as much as Van Dijk. So that were my two now, I know our listeners will be interested, very interested in yours. Well, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't agree with either of you, to be quite honest. Um, yeah. uh, Conte, certainly not. They've lost 11 games and they, they had a wobble as well. So yeah. I think he's, he's done a, a real good job, but, but I wouldn't make a manager of the year. I think you'd have to give it to Guardiola for... Right. Or just, just, you know... Holding off that charge of Liverpool by, yes. by driving his players, his substitutions on uh, on on Sunday were, yeah. were great. So uh, I, I, it would be between Guardiola and Klopp for me. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, fair enough. Uh, we've just talked about that we think the league is harder to win than the Champions League. Yeah, I, I would give it to Guardiola. Um, on the player, it's not easy this year, is it? That no, hasn't it's been, not. You know, uh, we've had our discussions about Kevin De Bruyne. Yeah, I know you and John have been critical of him. He's done some wonderful things, but he has also had some very quiet games yes. where you see, you think to yourself, "Well, where is he?" You know. Yeah, I would pick the I would pick another City player. I wouldn't go for Salah because he's been a bit off the mark in the last two or three I months. I agree with you. Yeah, uh, I would go for Bernardo Silva at City. I think he's been yes. City. Consistently their best player. Although on Sunday he was one of the guys that got the hook <laughs> because he he wasn't playing very well. So yeah, um, but he, he's yeah, a, he's a brilliant there, player. That would be my two aim and two two city people. Okay, and uh, just before we let you go, you're working for RTE on Saturday night, and of course it's Champions League final night. A lot of people, if you look at the bookies' odds, uh, Liverpool are even money. And uh, Real Madrid are something like eleven to four. I think that's insane. I think I think Madrid have some very very good players. They have Benzema for a start, really outstanding goalkeeper as well. And Liverpool look dog tired for the last couple of weeks. How do you see it, Liam? I agree with you. I agree with you. If you had have asked me, you know, two months ago, the final is going to be Liverpool Real Madrid. I would say, oh, Liverpool will beat them. You know, yeah. Madrid. And defend. Liverpool have got great attacking players. Uh, they've got strong midfield. Um, they've got Van Dijk at the back. You know, 
uh, I, I would I would go for Liverpool. But the last few weeks I've been watching Liverpool, they've been kind of stuttering, haven't they? They have, you know, yeah. even against Wolves, even yeah. against Wolves, they gave up a right few chances. Yeah. Um, Van Dijk is he going to be a hundred percent fit? Is Salah going to be a hundred percent fit? Fabinho. Thiago looks like he's he's out yeah. of the game. Um, I think it's tipped the scales um, towards Madrid, but I, you know. I, I'm going to sit on the fence. Well, you've I got another really... few days to think about it before you have well, to. Well, no, I'm going to sit on the fence because I, I have I have doubts in my mind having watched a lot of Liverpool's games in the last few weeks, you know. Yeah. Uh, they are looking tired and you, you, they've been on the go week in, week out, whereas Madrid have had the league won for a long time. They, they've, they've had their feet up for two weeks since they, yeah. since they knocked Man City out of the Champions League. So... Uh, it's going to be very, very tight. Yeah, I think it's going to be a great match, Liam. I think the, it has the ingredients uh, to be a great match. And if you look at Real, they dealt with PSG from bad position. They dealt with Chelsea from a bad position. They were dead and buried against City. Came back, came back, came back. And Benzema, I think, has shown himself to be a great leader of the team and a great goal scorer. And the... The guy, uh, Vinicius, their left winger, uh, I don't like to think as a Liverpool fan about what he might do to Trent or in that hole that Trent leaves it right back. So that might be a turning point in the game, but it should be a fantastic game. And we're extremely grateful to you for joining us today, Liam. And let's hope uh, we have a great final to finish off a great season. We're very grateful to you, Liam. Uh, okay, I owe, I owe you 50 quid, Eamon, so I'll, what, I'll wait. What was the bet? The lead staying up, you got that money. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> or, or we, might, we might call it quits because you said Everton will go down. I did, yeah, we'll call it quits then. <laughs> <laughs> no pony for me. Okay, <laughs> Lee Brady, thanks not just for today, but for the whole season, the listeners, and I really, really appreciate the contribution you and John have made uh, to our enjoyment of the Premier League and good luck on Saturday night it should be a great game we're grateful to Liam